it's almost that time of year for children to receive vaccinations before beginning of the school year, which helps prevent them from becoming sick or spreading infectious diseases. Here to share more is the health services manager, Candace De Silva, and school nurse coordinator, Cirilla Shaw. Welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> and Cirilla, we'll ask you first, since you're a nurse, mm -hmm. what is the importance of all the vaccinations? So vaccines are actually disease preventable vaccines. Mm -hmm. And what they're preventing are diseases that can be very harmful, uh, if not deadly, to children. And so that is why they are so important. And can you tell our viewers a little bit more about the age groups that need that done and why it's so important before they go back to school? So there are state requirements that mm -hmm. the CDC puts out. A uh, child actually starts to be vaccinated before they leave the hospital. They get their first of three hepatitis Bs. They go back for certain visits and they get more and more and more. And actually by the time a child is six years old, if they have followed the CDC recommendations, they will have had about 14 vaccinations. So they should get used to, well, do we ever get used to getting it? <laughs> well, the good thing about it is if you get them, then mm -hmm. by the time you reach the uh, eighth grade, mm -hmm. you may not need another one for 10 years. There's every 10 years, all of us, not just kids, <laughs> should be getting our tetanus boosters. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you let us know a little bit more about, you know, with each age group, why it's so important and you know I mean when kids are around other kids yes let's face it they're little germ factories yes they are and so immunizations protects us so that they can safely play together without the risk of an outbreak um, there are some children who aren't able to get mm -hmm. immunizations for medical or religious reasons. At pre-K level, if the mm -hmm. parent decides they don't want them, but only at pre-K level can you have a parental exemption. But for all of those who aren't vaccinated, they rely upon those who can be mm -hmm. so that everybody can be well. Yeah, so if a child's mm -hmm. immune system is down, let's say a child is struggling with cancer. Exactly, mm -hmm. that would be a medical exemption. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And as far as, you know, what do parents have to kind of worry about before that first day of school? What's the, what's the deadline that parents have to be really thinking about? Because we're kind of that halfway mark of summer, and of course you don't want summer to ever end as a kid, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what are, you know, what's that deadline for parents? And is right. it different between public and private schools? Not at all. It's okay. state-based, state, okay. state of Missouri to attend school. And so uh, the city health department is very good about talking with parents about exemption who are interested in them. Uh, and so it's grade based. Okay. So when you look at the state charts, you'll see that by the time a child is 19 months of age, they're gonna need certain immunizations. And at the pre-K level, for instance, they only need one uh, measles immunization and one chicken pox immunization. But by the time they enter kindergarten, they will need two. So on that summer, in between coming out of uh, pre-K going into kindergarten, you're gonna need to catch up on the, the measles, mumps, rubella shot and your chicken pox or varicella shot. So it's grade based. So somebody can look at the chart, see what grade their child is in and go all the way down mm -hmm. and see what immunizations they will have needed by that point. And that's something that they can discuss with their doctor too, because they can just go mm -hmm. to the regular pediatrician, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, they can. And do you have any special programs for any kids, like if they don't have a pediatrician or something like that, can they get them at school ever? Well, we do have partners that work with us in the community, uh, our community-based partners who will, uh, with consent forms signed, come to the schools and do some of the immunizations for us. Okay, and I know you mm -hmm. both, you oversee the public and private schools, so everybody's on the same page, right? Yes. Well, and yes, then... Nurse Shaw mm -hmm. uh, was with the St. Louis Public School System, and I supervise school nurses that go into the private and parochial schools. And as Nurse Shaw mentioned, you know, immunization really gives parents the power to protect their children against serious illnesses. Mm -hmm. And the state requirement form that she mentioned is actually available on our website, St. Louis, uh, 
www.mo.gov backslash health. And so our school nurses routinely go into the schools and do the immunization checks to ensure compliance with the state requirements. And they will actually talk with parents to educate them more about uh, why they need to immunize their children. If there's some hesitancy there or some concern like Nurse Shaw mentioned, uh, they will be more than happy to speak with parents to know, because we understand that parents want to make the best choice for their family um, and make a safe decision. Okay, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. If you stay with us at STL Live, we'll learn more with the Department of Health after the break.